Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R730 XD. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on NVMe. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R730 XD. Do us a favor if anything is video useful. Click that like, smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get rolling. Uh, this video is going to be about NVMe. Uh, we're going to cover the uh, three different options that will potentially work for the R730 XD, and we'll show you how you can see those options. And then at the very end, we're going to show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to enable slot bifurcation. So uh, the three options that we're going to go over are U.2, uh, the PCIe slot, and M.2. So let's start with U.2. So with a lot of the uh, 13th gen, uh, you really, there is no um, uh, U.2 solution. Uh, with the R730 XD, similar to the R630, uh, there is a U.2 solution, and you have to install an NVMe kit. So this is what you're going to need. Um, you're going to need a specific uh, card and cable that will allow you to uh, hook up uh, four uh, U.2 drives, and U.2 is just another way of basically saying that it's going to be able to plug into your back plane uh, similar to a normal SAS SAT or, or solid state drive, okay? Uh, so there is a great option with um, the U.2s. Now, how can I see the U.2s? Uh, well, if you go into iDRAC, um, you're going to actually be able to see them, but you're not going to be able to do anything with them. You can't uh, install an OS. You can't um, see the physical disk itself. Um, so it, it, there's really nothing you can do with an iDRAC. Now, if you go into BIOS, uh, under device configurator, uh, that's where you'll be able to um, actually start to play around and do stuff with your um, U.2 NVMEs. Uh, so with that, um, you can you need to make sure, because there is a setting that's called slot disablement, and this might be an issue that some people run into, you need to make sure that you enable that because that is a problem that you can run into uh, where you won't actually be able to do anything. So just make sure it's enabled, uh, and then you'll actually be able to see your U.2s, um, and then you can install an OS, make a virtual machine, you can do a lot of different things at that point. Um, and then the same thing, if you install VMware, uh, you can go into VMware, and yes, you can uh, put uh, make your U.2 into a virtual machine or a data store, and you can... Uh, put an OS onto um, the virtual machine. So uh, the U.2 is definitely a great solution, in my opinion, the best solution uh, for the R730 XD. Uh, so next, uh, we'll go over the PCIe. So I put uh, here two different solutions because I wanted to uh, basically show you the two uh, different potential options. So uh, right here, I have an Intel uh, True OEM NVMe SSD. Uh, there is no Dell firmware on it this will not work okay same thing with samsung uh, you have to have uh, a dell firmware version nvme pcie card otherwise it will not work okay so with the uh, dell one uh, you can install it into your uh, pcie slot uh, you can go into idrac to see it and it's kind of similar to what we just talked about the u.2s in the sense of uh, you're not going to uh, be able to see a physical disk or install an os or uh, do anything realistically with it um, and it's actually the same thing if you go into vmware you can't turn it into a virtual machine uh, you can't install an os onto it you, there's really nothing that you can do with it um, the only thing that you can really do with the pcie version uh, if you go into the bios and you go into the device configurator um, basically you can use it for extra storage and again you have to make sure that the uh, uh, the slot has been enabled um, from the slot disablement uh, setting but again the PCIe version um, you know while it's uh, great it's not the best by any means U.2 will offer a whole lot more because you can do OS's and virtual machines uh, and this is really just extra storage okay uh, the next option is the M.2 um, and the M.2 the first thing that you have to, uh, to know is that um, this is uh, kind of a homegrown solution to an extent in the sense of you would think that you could use a Dell uh, 14th gen BOSS card and it would be reverse compatible and you could pop it in and it would work on the 13th gen, but that's actually not the case. This is actually a super micro card, okay? Um, so with the super micro card, we can install two M.2 NVMEs. Um, and if you go through the different ways to see them, um, you can't see them in iDRAC. You can't see them uh, in BIOS under their device uh, um, configurator. Uh, the way that you can see them is installing VMware, and then you can actually turn this in uh, to a virtual machine, and you can put an OS onto it. Um, so that is a great solution because uh, the M.2s are a little less expensive. Um, so this is a, a definitely a great OS solution as a whole. All right, so now that we uh, know the different options, uh, I'm going to put my ESD gloves on right here, and we're going to go ahead and install each individual one. And then at the very end, we're going to show you 
you uh, the slot bifurcation, which I, I also should have mentioned, I guess, while we were talking about the M.2, um, you do have to make sure that you have um, slot bifurcation set up. Um, and then if you, if you go into your machine and slot bifurcation isn't even an option, you can't find it, um, you need to make sure you update your BIOS. Uh, if you don't have an updated BIOS, uh, slot bifurcation won't be an option uh, because when Dell originally released the R730XD, uh, you know, NVMe wasn't a thing really. It wasn't something that you could do um, with it or something that they were trying to do with it. Um, so they, they eventually added it on um, with one of the BIOS updates. Uh, so that's when slot bifurcation became an actual option. So that's just something good to note to make sure that you have uh, for the M.2s. Otherwise, again, you won't be able to use them. So just make sure you have an updated BIOS. And we'll actually show you that in one of our videos coming up. So now we'll install each one. We'll start with the U.2, go to the PCIe, finish with the M.2s. All right, so I wanted to lay out the different options for you and just show you uh, kind of what it looks like here. So the uh, U.2 kit is definitely way more involved in the sense of, you know, here's all the drives. Uh, you need the card with the cable to be able to actually uh, get the kit. And we'll show you actually uh, how to install the, uh, the card with the cables running all the way to the back plane to enable... Uh, slots 20 through 23 to be able to be NVMe capable um, and then we'll install uh, the PCIe and the M.2s as well. Uh, one of the things I did want to note that the uh, U.2s is only possible with the um, 24 bay or 26 bay if you want to call it that with the two in the rear but the uh, small form factor option of the R730XD you can't use it with the uh, large form factor you can use it with the small form factor only so I did want to note that for the U.2's um, because that is an important thing to note of course if you are at home with a large form factor thinking that you're going to be able to use them you're not going to be able to so alright so uh, let's go ahead and install one by one and show you uh, each option and how to put them in alright we're going to go ahead and open the machine up make sure it's set to unlock lift the top up just like you always do we're going to remove the air baffle uh, and we are going to uh, remove riser 1 here in the back. Uh, this will be needed to uh, physically install the card. I uh, push the blue button and you can open it up. Push the other blue to, uh, button over here and you can open, open it up so that you can pull out the existing bracket because you're going to need the space for your uh, current bracket on your card. And then you're going to slide the card in. Uh, honestly, it's really easy to do. You just need to line everything up. Um, there's a tip on the bracket that needs to go in perfectly and then just make sure your leads are in and you are uh, realistically good to go um, and then you're just going to close it uh, you'll hear it click shut and uh, then you're going to close the back as well and you're going to hear it click shut and then you're just going to reinstall uh, riser one um, and as a whole you can see it's very simple um, and one thing I do actually recommend before installing riser one is we put in the cables first. It just makes it a little bit easier than trying to put the cables in while riser one's already installed. So we're just going to put them in uh, A, B, C, D. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory as far as when you're looking at it, which ports to put the cables in. But you do need to make sure you have them all in properly. And then once you do that, we've just found it's easier to put the cables in before installing the riser. So now you just go ahead and put the riser in uh, and you are ready to run the cables uh, to the back plane. So this is the actual tricky part. Uh, so now we're going to remove the uh, the fan bank here because the cables actually go under the fans. Um, and then on the side, uh, you're going to see I am uh, pulling right here this black tab. Uh, I shouldn't even call it a tab. It's like a little plastic piece on the side. Um, you want the the cables to go in between the black plastic and the side of the chassis itself. Uh, so right now I'm just going to be you know, uh, pushing them in, pushing them in, and um, make sure everything is nice and flush. This part, I, you know, is such a pain, to be honest. I always hate doing this. It's just, uh, it's a little more difficult than it should be, but it's it's not, honestly, it's that hard. It's just, um, you have to use a little more force than I like. So uh, once you've run everything, you make sure that it's flush. You can put the fan bank back on. Uh, and this is one way to ensure that you've um, properly run uh, the cables and that there's no issues and one of the extra steps so then you'll notice all the ports they're labeled again and same as the uh, the original ones that we installed into the card in riser one uh, so you're just going to line all the ports up there is a little bit of extra slack on the cables so it, it can be um, almost feel like you're you're working with limited space uh, but once you get them all in it'll feel a little bit better so uh, just line them up uh, start popping them in a b c d and really it's uh it's not too difficult, it just uh, takes a little bit of time to install this kit as a whole. Uh, but again, it's, uh, it's not too difficult and it's uh, something that you can definitely do.
So, all right, well, now we've got um, all four of the uh, of the ports in. We've got uh, the NVMe setup completely done for the U.2s, um, which is uh, my personal favorite for the 730XDs. You can use the back four ports for U.2 NVMe. So uh, this is personally, like I said, my favorite solution and a great solution as a whole. Uh, and now we will uh, go ahead and do uh, the PCIe version. All right, so now we're gonna do the uh, PCIe NVMe solution. Um, I did want to note one more time, do make sure that you have the Dell firmware version. You can't put in Intel or Samsung. It does have to be Dell firmware. So just make sure your latch is unlocked, pop it open, remove the lid, uh, just like every video we've done so far. Um, and now what we're gonna do is uh, remove the air baffle just to have a little bit of uh, extra space for the video, but you don't have to, to do it. We just wanted to open up a little space here. Um, so we're gonna remove riser one, uh, exactly like we had done uh, for uh, the uh, U.2 solution where we're gonna push the two blue tabs uh, to open the, uh, the front and the back, give space for the card, uh, remove the extra bracket that's already in there. Personally, I like to save those. Um, and now we're just gonna go ahead and install the Dell PCIe NVMe. Line up your bracket. Uh, this part uh, is very easy. It can be a little bit difficult. Uh, it's just a matter of lining uh, several things up at one time, but it's, it's honestly, it's very simple. Click in the, uh, the back. Uh, once you're done, just to make sure the card's secure, we're going to lock the uh, front here as well just to make sure that the bracket is in there perfectly. Uh, and then we're just going to put a riser one back in. So really it was uh, just that simple. So that's it. That's the PCIe version. Uh, now we're going to move on to the uh, M.2 solution, which we have to use as we discussed a super micro card as opposed to the Dell 14th gen boss card, which is not reverse compatible. Uh, so we will do that next. All right, so before we show you how to install the card for the M.2 solution, we're actually gonna show you how to install the M.2 drives uh, into the card itself, uh, which is honestly um, not too difficult by any means, but I thought this might be useful for um, someone out there. So uh, let's go ahead and hop in and get started. So here is uh, the card itself. You'll see these plastic pegs here. We just need to open them up. Uh, the clips right here, we're just gonna pop them open. You're gonna take your M.2 card, uh, take the leads, it's gonna come in at a, a little bit of an angle here. Um, you're gonna put it in like this, uh, and you'll see, I'm gonna let go, you're gonna see that it's at uh, a bit of an angle here, and it's it's holding, it's in fine, uh, but you need to push it down, and then you're going to use the clip uh, to lock it into place and make sure that uh, everything is set uh, perfectly so when you install it, you don't have to worry about it jostling around, okay? So now we'll go ahead and do it again for the second one. So. Uh, literally, we're just going to um, open the clip up, uh, put it into uh, the leads itself, and then we are going to slide it down again and clip it into place. So uh, really, it's, it's a pretty simple, straightforward process, but I wanted to show, show you how to do that at home just in case there's something that you needed. All right, so now let's go ahead and actually install the card itself. So we're gonna go ahead and pop the latch, open it up just like everything we've been doing before. Uh, very, very similar to uh, the PCIe version that we just did. I'm gonna remove the air baffle just so we have some extra viewing space, but you don't have to do that at home. Remove riser one, uh, and within riser one, you're gonna have to push the two clips again, or the two blue buttons, to open the front and the back. Remove the extra bracket uh, so that you have space for your card. Uh, line your card up, just make sure that the bracket's in and the leads are uh, uh, perfect with the socket. Uh, clip it into place. You'll feel it physically go in and you'll see the leads go in. Uh, close the back and the front to lock it back into place. And you'll hear it click back in and it's really just that simple. And now we're gonna go ahead and install riser one again. And now um, once we've gotten this perfectly in, we've actually uh, installed the M.2 solution. Uh, for the NVMe for the R730XD. Hey guys, it's Ben with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make your two M.2 drives recognizable by just pretty much any operating system. Unfortunately, once you plug in your PCIe to M.2 adapter and you plug in your two NVMe M.2 drives, it will not work unless you do what we're about to show you. 
So we're gonna mess with something called bifurcation. It's a very simple process. So once you have your drives installed and your PCIe to M.2 adapter installed, go ahead and boot up your server. And while it's booting up, um, during post, you wanna go ahead and press F2, which will take us to system setup, and then click on system BIOS, and then go to integrated devices, and then scroll all the way down to slot bifurcation. So this screen might look a little bit different just depending on where you've installed your drives, but for us it's slot 4, so we're going to go ahead and click on the drop down and click on X4, 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 X4 bifurcation. And really, we're just going to go ahead and back out, uh, click yes so we can save our changes, and we can go ahead and reboot our system. See? Super, super easy. Um, and the reason we want to do this is that our PCIe slot it only reads the adapter as one device. So when we do this slot bifurcation, it's almost breaking up our PCIe slot into separate PCIe slots. Obviously not physically, this is, this is all virtually, but it's basically virtually breaking it down into uh, multiple different slots. And because we're doing this, then we're able to read the two drives that we have installed onto our adapter. So if you guys found anything in this video useful, go ahead, leave a like, smash the subscribe button. And if you're interested in buying a custom built server, so go ahead, you can go to our website or you can message us at sales at cloudninjas.com. Thank you guys and have a great day.